two of the biggest lies we've been told about sex in our society, you, you've referenced one of them. Number one, you only deserve to have outrageous sex if you look a certain way that like the mainstream dictated was like sexually attractive yeah. no, on no, like no. the cover of Cosmopolitan in like 1996, right? But pleasure is a goddamn human right and everyone deserves to feel it. Yes. And I have been in tantric states where I could truly fuck anyone because I see the absolute beauty and desirability and amazingness of, of anyone. Like it's, it's like everybody can be sexual, can be sacred. And when someone is in their truth and their expression, it can be absolutely erotic regardless of, of what that body looks like. And, a a different, actually, I'd love your thoughts on that. And then I have the other piece, which is where no, I wanted to go. I, but that's interesting. While you touch on that, you know, one of the things I do want to point out, when just when you mention the word sex, doesn't mean to say you have to have penetration. Yeah. Sex can be, you know, a touch mm. of your partner, just a brush past. It, it can be all of those creating... It's almost like you create that wonderful energy of sex around you. Like when you first met a partner, you can I mean, I, it's indescribable of that energy of, you know, if they walk towards you and it, it, it's just fucking fantastic. Yes. And we can create that energy. That's something that you really learn on the tantric path is that you can generate arrows, right? It's, it's part, I actually explained this in a way that I loved the other day, which is, when I say something like orgasm is our true nature, right? That can be kind of inconceivable to some people who think of orgasm as a physiological response in the body. Right, right. But orgasm is a state, right? No matter what, sometimes your pussy's contracting, sometimes someone's right. ejaculating, but sometimes not, right? You can orgasm right. in your sleep. You can orgasm like just breathing. And what I realized is in every moment of reality, something is being created out of nothing, Right. right. In right. every single moment. Yes. Like out of the infinite possibility. The universe is doing this right now. Right. Yeah. Which is so amazing. I so know. It's we just, making love to itself, which means that it's perpetually orgasming to create all of this. So we're like tapping into that state. And when we really actually like connect with that, it changes the whole quality of orgasm. Oh, absolutely. But I think we're, you know, you've got to understand a lot of people respectfully not a lot of people have actually orgasmed totally which is quite i think it's it, it it's not it's not is i my sad yes i am sad about that yeah because there is something so beautiful about having an orgasm yeah. and achieving that and being so open with your partner you know i go go back to the show shanika and matt shanika i turned around and i said um i just have to ask you you know these are questions i ask my clients it, have you had an orgasm? And she said, well, I think so. And I was like, yeah, she's not had an orgasm. Totally. Yeah. And then, you know, looking at uh, her husband, who's trying to look for the G-spot, but has the G-spot, how to, how to find your G-spot in a book. So I, visually for me is not a good place to be because I visually see him looking at the book with his fingers inserted and say, darling, am I there yet? Yeah. Or, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I which just, is still better than not reading the book at all, but let's say still maybe better, not where we want to be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, I felt sad I, because yeah. that's such a wonderful, having an orgasm is, is so incredible for, for both parties. I mean, look, I saw one of my best male friends who I know is such a wonderful human, has exposure to me, has exposure to so much of our community. And in a play experience, I watched him with his fingers like penetrating women too hard and too fast when they weren't fully ready and how he thought that's what women wanted. And I was like, this is the most normal way, normal in our society that women's bodies are being treated. Like the vast majority of women don't even know what it is to be fully consensual with their own body, to not let a finger or a penis or a strap on or a tongue go inside unless your body is a yes, right? We don't even right. listen to ourselves. Right. And so there's a perpetual tension and shutdown that starts to happen. And that's where we get numbness and pain and I can't have an orgasm from. So my body actually learned to try and protect itself against penetration rather than open into penetration. And this is no one's, no, very few of these men or people with tongues and fingers are doing this 
maliciously. They just aren't right. taught better. They're good humans. And if you watch porn and that was your education and no one ever told you differently, because it can be so hard to say, I want this. We're afraid to emasculate him. We're afraid to, to get rejected. We're afraid to be whatever, all these things to hurt his feelings. It's like, no one ever told them how were they supposed to know. And then most women don't even realize that they're like enduring sex rather than thriving into it. Right. And where are you going to learn how to do it differently if not a sex room? <laughs> right. Right. That's why it's, you know, having a creating a space that is, you know, like a, a sex room where you can, again, push your boundaries or you can explore each other knowing that it's safe and it's consensual yes. and bringing in toys. You know, I've had camps some, sometimes if I mention the word vibrators, you know, a f the female side wants to bring in a vibrator. The guy says, oh, so you don't need me. It's like, oh, for fuck's sakes. No, this is something we do together. Yeah. This is an exploration we do together. Yes. You know, this is, it can be used both ways. Yes. It's not just for one thing. But I think that's down to education. And I think as a couple, it's so rare that we ever give ourselves the time to make a mistake, to fuck up, to do something different. And so one of the very first sex practices I was ever taught that was so helpful is called sandboxing, where it's like, you just set a timer, 10, 15, 20 minutes, and you say, look, like I'm going to touch your clitoris, but I'm going to do it in totally new and different ways. I'm going to stroke in That's ways I never have before. I'm going to press in ways I never have before. I'm going to, I don't know, meow. And we're going to see, you know, maybe I'll nibble on your inner thigh. You could tell me if there's something you absolutely never want me to do. Right. Other than that, I'm going to explore. And you tell me what you love, what you don't love, what you want more of. And it's a sandbox, meaning we're building things, we're playing, we're exploring. We're not in a sandbox being like, better have a climax and you better touch me exactly right or else you're not really a lover or a man or whatever the like story is, right? And so it's like, let's just give ourselves the time to explore and play. And also I asked my, my partner, you know, because I could tell he had very specific desires and I never been with someone that I could intuit, like intuit or just sense that he had very specific desires. I was like, tell me exactly what you want. Like right. exactly. But don't you think that starts, that all starts off with a fucking conversation. Yeah. And most people never talk about it. Well, no, no, they don't. Yeah. That's why I found it so interesting. And I was thrilled about my show is you sat, you people sat there on the sofa. So many people have reached out to me and said, oh my God, it created an amazing conversation. Yeah. And that's where it all starts. It's just communication. Yes. Is the key. Yes. And the last piece I wanted, wanted to bring up that uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on is, again, one of the biggest lies in sexuality is that it has to end at a certain point, right? Especially for women, right? You, you reach a sort of expiration date. And oh, my, what do you mean, age-wise? Yes. Oh, for Christ's sake. Yeah. <laughs> So my best friend is 67 years old. She's having the absolute best sex of her life, right? right? So many of my teachers in their 60s. So many of my friends in their 60s. And what I've noticed is the glittering, especially women, but this is people of all genders, the glittering elders of our society have embraced their sexuality in one way or another. Like they are still fucking in a way that makes them happy. And they, to me, have redefined aging. Because it's like you to me embody in our short experience right? what we get told maybe can't exist as we age, which is energy, aliveness, audacity, power, play, you know, yep. having yep. your own Netflix show, right? Yeah. Having your own BDSM jewelry line, like doing whatever the fuck you want, right? And the essence of that is like I continue to live my destiny with yes. like joy and magic. Yes. And I think that sexuality is a huge part of that. When we're still owning our sexuality and how beautiful and how magical and how powerful it can be and that it can absolutely get better. I have seen that if we're working on it, if we're paying attention to it, if we're making it important, it's like that's where I see, that's where I'm like, oh, fuck, like I can't wait to be like 70, you know? Right, but I think as we as we get older, um, you know, our bodies change. Yeah. You know, we we hit that menopausal thing. You know, the vagina starts to drying up and, you know, perhaps sex can be a little bit more painful, but you can still enjoy toys and things like that. But our body changes in a way sexual, in a, sexually in how we view sex. Mm -hmm. Like we've gone past that honeymoon phase. And when we were younger, you know, we did all the exploration and, you know, we had sex, lots of sex and so forth. When you're married or you've been with a partner for a long time, your you the your views change on on sex. But it really fucking irritates a 
oh, that was it. Somebody, not mentioning any names, I don't actually didn't said uh, made a comment about something on my post. And look, I don't this, I don't have that many hateful things, but it's like, oh, you know, she shouldn't be doing that. Should be she she should be somewhere. I don't know in a, in a, in a grandma's home. And I was like, what? How old do you think I fucking? Am? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? No. And, and, and even if you were 112, I would hope uh, that yeah, you were still designing like, sex well, rooms. Hang on a second. <laughs> and, and and loads of people do, went to my defense. How dare you talk to her like that? And da, 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 da. and I was just reading the comments, and I, I was just laughed. I was like, how stupid! Se- you ha- can have sex whatever age you are. It doesn't go. Oh, sex after 40. Mm, no, you know, sex after 50. Oh God forbid. 60. Are you kidding me? 70. Oh, that's disgusting. 80. That's even worse. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's a connection you have with your partner. Oh, that just gets me going. So, which conceivably could get better. The more mature you get, the, I the think more emotional get- safety, you know how to provide. Yes. I think you are more, satisfied in your body you're feeling a little bit more uh, present in your body um you're not at that that time where you're thinking oh my god my stomach isn't flat enough you know i don't have a six pack and oh my god my breasts aren't as you know my breasts aren't as perky as they were you know because gravity happens after a period of time so i think you can have sex at any age and you should enjoy it yeah and but it doesn't as i said have to be Penetrative sex. It can still be loving, touching, feeling, brushing against, whispering, I love you, and things like that.